Hello and welcome to another Lexmoto ride out. Today we are out on Lexmoto's newest model, the Lexmoto Chieftain. Yes, despite this large scooter presence, it is still a 125cc bike. And I think it's well worth taking a closer look at. So let's have a walk around. Looking at the front of the bike, we can see that large 14-inch wheel at the front uh, with a rather large disc brake on it. Uh, that has two brake hoses in there because it is a combined braking system. As we move around the bike and come towards the rear, uh, we can see uh, the slightly smaller rear wheel. That's a 13-inch, uh, which is supported by two twin shocks. All in all, a really lovely looking scooter. Uh, we are obviously out on the white and blue one today. However, the other color scheme that we offer is a gray and red color option. Moving around to the front of the bike, you get to have a look at that headlight unit. Now, the headlight on this one, you've got these fantastic daytime running lights across the front there. Uh, the indicators, just for your reference, illuminate the top section of the daytime running light area. The lights on this one, I believe, are LED. So if I chuck it into the full light mode, yeah, LED headlight. All in all, a great looking bike. And if we have a look at the rear, we can see that rear light cluster again with the indicators filling in the accents around the light. A really nice modern looking design. Now, with this bike, it has a great abundance of cubby holds. And if we, that's on, seat. Press it on there and the seat opens up. And underneath there, we have enough room for a full face helmet and some extra as well, which is great. On the front, if you wanted to fill up with fuel, press it, and the fuel latch opens up so you can fill that one up. What else have we got? We've got a couple cubby holes on the front here. i put them on the off position. I think actually these ones, are they open? No. Open that one up. We've got a little cubby hole at the front there. And that one's already open, and a second cubby hole at the front there as well. Handy for little gadgets and gizmos. Uh, the ignition also has a cover on it, so you can try and keep the water and such out of there. Uh, to undo that one, obviously it's not going to go back, you need to pop the key in and give it a turn. Another little safety uh, precaution there. Moving on to the controls on the bike, let's fire this one up and have a look at the speedometer. So, looking at the speedometer, we've got most of the information here on the left-hand side. That's got your, uh, your trip, your odometer, your uh, fuel gauge, the time. Uh, your speed is in the center here, shown in both miles and kilometers. And on the right-hand side, we've got the RPM, uh, showing your revs on the engine. Uh, now, with that, that's not going to be so important because this is a twist-and-go scooter. Uh, but it's handy if you want to have a know. Have a look, see how fast the engine's running, if that's your thing. Looking at the uh, controls on the bike, uh, on the right-hand side, we've got the ignition, we've got some light controls, we've also got your kill switch. On the left-hand side, we've got the indicator, the horn, uh, the light controls, and a passing light as well, as you can see. That's showing up on the speedometer there as I activate that one. So I'm sure you guys actually want to go on a ride with us. Let's do it. Okay. Okay, so as we set off, we can quickly gain speed. Despite this one's large size, it does accelerate quite swiftly. The uh, larger wheel span of this bike does make it a lot more stable. Um, we're traveling at a decent speed, as well as really in the day today. The only downside of a long wheelbase is uh, when you are trying to move it around while well, you're not riding. It's uh, not as great turning circles as some of the more nippy small ones, but 
that's not really a big problem. Now the engine on this one, it's an air-cooled motor, produces 5.9 kilowatts. It's not the most powerful motor we've got in the Lexmoto range, however it does an ample job of getting this bike moving. So we move along here, we're going up a bit of a hill. Going to go past those cyclists. So even though we're going up a bit of a gradient and this bike is moving my 18 stone frame, uh, we're still keeping an okay speed, just dropping a little bit below 40 mile an hour there. As we got onto the uh, flat and downhill sections though, we certainly make up for that. Now the factory that we use to manufacture this bike uh, is the Tianda factory. Uh, we've been working with those guys for a number of years. They produce uh, models such as the Hunter, uh, the Aspire, formerly the ZSF. Uh, this is their first foray into scooters. All in all, I'm really impressed with how this scooter has um, come out. Um, it handles really well, it's nice and stable. That 13-inch wheel on the back uh, is just a bit smaller, so it helps with the acceleration, which obviously helps the bike move along given it's a larger frame. It's a comfortable bike, I'm just over six foot, and it's a pretty relaxed position. I have got space there to put my feet up and chill out a little bit. There is also room for someone on the back if you have graduated and got your full license. We'll drop down, we've got a bit of a corner here. You can see we're keeping up with traffic, no problem, even catching up this gentleman. Now the Chieftain has been a little bit of a wait. Uh, we originally launched this bike uh, to our dealers back in January. We gave a first glimpse of this bike. We have been testing it considerably. Uh, the original model that people saw when it was announced uh, came in, we ran that a few thousand miles, um, but we've also had problems with uh, previous um, suppliers that we've used whereby a sample bike that we get wouldn't be a true indication of what actually comes out of the factory. And whilst we've made steps to move away from such factories, uh, we've also tried to refine our procedure to make sure uh, we don't come unstuck. So with this bike, we actually received this uh, a little while back, uh, back towards uh, the end of July. Well, that's not the greatest of manoeuvre. And we were testing the bike for a good number of weeks to make sure it got up to mileage and we were happy with the uh, performance of the bike and the durability uh, on not just the uh, concept or prototype bike, uh, but also the first batch Uh, with this particular one, it's not the newest of examples. Uh, we've been running this one in all conditions um, and we are up to 1,252 miles at the moment. And we're pretty confident that uh, anything we're likely to encounter have been taken care of. Busy section of road there obviously. Everyone's out on their tractors today. Well, let's slow down because it's a 30 mile an hour zone. Be safe. And we're travelling along at 30 mile an hour. That's per the speed limit. So the uh, maxi scooter market is uh, a pretty interesting one. It's something that we've always found, well, we've never quite got into uh, the full maxi scooter um, lineup or, compet or competition, as it were. Um, we've always done the sort of more larger body traditional scooters uh, with models like the Titan, the FMS, and enjoyed a reasonable amount of success and popularity with those models. 
With this bike, this is our first jump into a larger scooter. Uh, we felt the time was right, we felt that we've got the price where it needs to be uh, to be competitive in the market and we really hope that you guys uh, get a chance to enjoy this bike. Uh, one benefit that this bike does have over uh, a model such as the uh, Titan or the FMX uh, is that considerably larger underseat storage. As I said before, this one's capable of taking a full face helmet plus a little bit extra and those extra cubby holes at the front are useful as well. Um, I think there's always something reassuring when it comes to uh, riding a scooter and having that larger body. Just peace of mind, um, certainly in terms of weather protection, uh, you do find if it's a wet and rainy day, most of the rain sort of coming off either side of you, sparing your legs, um, which is nice. And this one's obviously got a screen on there, which uh, will keep, helps keep the wind out of my face as well, which is always a bonus. All in all, it's a really pleasant uh, riding experience. Uh, with this one, obviously, we've been uh, test riding this one over the bumps and hills that are the Devon countryside. However, if you're going to be somewhere which is a little bit more flat, you're going to be able to enjoy that more gradual acceleration. As I said before, the transmission in this one is a CVT transmission. That is an automatic twist and go unit. You do not need to worry about gears, which is going to be something that makes this bike a lot easier to jump on and go. Um, what else is there to say? Well, the uh, the feet position I've talked about being able to stretch out and put your feet at the front and uh, chill out a little bit. Uh, you have got that large hump in the middle as well to sort of set your feet in a, a forward facing position. Mind you, I don't suppose they're going to go in many other places. It's just really comfortable, really enjoyable. It's going to be ideal if you are uh, someone who's commuting, you need that extra storage space under the seat. Maybe you want to chuck some groceries in there. In terms of fuel economy, the engine is fitted with a fuel injection system. Uh, that is going to mean that it is quite frugal on the fuel. Uh, if you are taking it nice and easy, you can expect upwards of about 100 miles per gallon. Obviously, figures on bikes and scooters tend to be a little bit more uh, forgiving than the cars, given that I'm not transporting all the extra weight that cars do. Bizarre. But no, I think if you are someone who is not having to take kids to school, and you're looking for something that uh, is providing you with independent transport, the Chieftain is a fine option to consider. Um, it's not quite as fun as something like the Enigma or the Diablo, but it is insanely practical. So if you feel that that ticks the boxes for you, then I would certainly recommend popping down to your local Lexmoto dealer and taking a look. We have over 120 dealerships across the UK. If you pop onto the Lexmoto website, and uh, look at the Chieftain page. You can even put your postcode in and we will show you who your nearest dealer is that has a Chieftain in stock. And we'll also let you know which color is there as well. So if you are uh, absolutely adamant that the blue and white is for you or retrospectively or alternatively, the gray and red, head down, have a look. And I think you guys will be suitably impressed well, I hope you have enjoyed coming along with me today and taking a closer look at the Lexmoto Chieftain. I've certainly enjoyed coming out and bringing you guys along. If you had any questions that you wanted to ask, then feel free to put them down in the comment section. We'll do our best to get back to you. Make sure that you stay subscribed and press the bell notification to stay up to date with Lexmoto goings on. We also have fantastic Facebook and Instagram pages with lots of interesting content that you guys would benefit from getting involved with. I look forward to seeing you guys in a video again soon. Until then, ta-ra.